in the world of night vision, best is a relative and subjective term relative to budget, availability, and opinion. It's hard to comparison shop something as rare or expensive as night vision, so my choices may be flawed. It's also likely that today's tip of the spear operators are being deployed with better night vision than us civilians are even aware of. In the world of night vision, you can't really go into a retail store and simply try on a few dozen different sets of night vision, figure out what's gonna work for you, and then also get a price that you'd be happy with. So I bought the ATN PS31 3W Gen 3 white phosphorus with my own personal funds and I paid a normal price. Like most people about to spend a significant amount of money on a product, I spent a lot of time on research before making my final decision. For the uninitiated, night vision may seem fairly simple. Put on the tubes, look cool, see in the dark. However, the deeper you dive into the world of seeing stuff in the dark, the more you realize how complicated these decisions can be. Factors like weight, cost, and performance all come into play. The decision is very complex. The first thing to understand is that housings are not the same as the image intensifier tubes. The ATN PS31 is available with several different intensifier tube options, ranging in price from around 4300 MSRP at the entry level all the way up to 7500 MSRP for the highest quality tubes that ATN offers. Intensifier tubes take in whatever tiny amount of ambient light is available and they amplify it such that the human eyes can see it. In addition to visible light, these fascinating devices can also detect light waves in the infrared spectrum, which is normally invisible to humans. PS31 is a polymer BNVD housing made by ATN Corp that has adjustable eye spacing. While similar looking to the much more expensive PVS31, ATN's entry into the dual tube market has some noticeable differences. The PS31 has a built-in IR illuminator, the PVS does not, it has adjustable diopter, and also has automatic gain, all unlike the PVS31. Of course, these features do make the ATN unit weigh a bit more. The PVS31 is about three and a half, three and three quarters ounces lighter than the ATN PS31. So what were my first impressions on the PS31? I love the ATN PS31's image clarity, and I also appreciate the easy to use controls. I like that the unit has a wide angle 50 degree field of view. Is this unit just as good as units shipped with higher grade tubes? No, but just because something's not just as good doesn't mean that it's bad. As a value proposition of performance for the money, I'm actually very happy with the PS31. It's worth noting that the unit did not ship with a specification sheet for the exact tubes that were included. Also, it was a bit frustrating that ATN's website has some generic information on their PDF downloads that does not seem to reflect the exact details of the different intensifier tubes offered. All that said, the price of the Gen 3 white phosphor version seems to be in keeping with other housings from other manufacturers fitted with the same L3 Harris thin film white phosphorus tubes that were included in mine. After about four months of ownership, I still can't see any noticeable blemishes on either tube. On the whole, I'm very happy with my purchase, and so far I'm happy with the quality of the NVG. Can you get better tubes that ship with spec sheets? Yes, I'm sure you can. And again, the websites that offer those spec sheets and those tubes that come with them seem to charge more. Some of the accessories, like the quote G24 mount that's included for free with the NVG, seem poorly made and or a bit out of spec. Can these NVG compete with L3 filmless pinnacle tubes? No. The ATN PS31 ranges in price from about 4,000 to 7 street price, as opposed to over 12,000 plus for top shelf dual tubes. The PS31 is offered in a Gen 2 green phosphor. This unit comes in at around $4,300 MSRP, $3,900 for street price. 
I have not personally looked through these, but to me, it could represent a strong value and an affordable way to get into a budget set of dual tubes. This could be what I would lean towards if budget was my primary concern. You gotta remember at $3,900 for a dual tube, if you kind of split that in half, you would be just under $2,000 per eyepiece. So at that point, sub 2000, you're looking at really the bottom of kind of price and quality and stuff like that. And you're very much in that range of budget tubes. So that's something to consider. But if you're looking for a really affordable way to get into dual tubes, I don't know, that might be something to try. Although I haven't personally looked through them. The next version is the Gen 2 in white phosphor. So this is going to be called the PS31 WPT, has an MSRP of just under $4,800. I've seen them for about $4,500 street price. The WPT version does come with Photonis Echo Gen 2 white phosphor tubes. The Photonis Echo is considered by some to be a Gen 2 Plus and one of the really affordable ways to get into a decent white phosphorus tube. Another YouTube creator who I'll just call Hop because I don't want to butcher his name, he also lives in the Portland area, although I don't know him, has a good video on these tubes. He might say that the Photonis tubes that are sold in the ATN housings may not be the top rated examples of a Photonis Echo, and so he has kind of mixed reviews on the Photonis Echoes sent in ATN housings. Personally, I did get the opportunity to look through a PVS-14 fitted with a Photonis Echo tube, and it would get the job done, but it's not nearly at the level of the Gen 3 white phosphorus, so that's going to be an L3 Harris thin film tubes that I have in mind. The next option available on the ATN PS31 is their Gen 3 green phosphorus coming in at just under 6,500 MSRP, 5,900 and change street price from what I've seen. I believe this intensifier tube is constructed by Elbit Systems. I'm not positive about this and I have not looked through them personally. I've looked around and there's some other videos about Gen 3 green phosphorus tubes and they seemed pretty cool for me. Although I haven't looked through them, this could be a value if I was right on the edge as far as budget. I have not looked through them though and I don't know, while you're spending 6,000, you might as well spend 7,000 and make sure that you're poor forever. The top of the line ATN PS31 is gonna be their Gen 3 in white phosphor. This version has MSRP of $7,500, street price of 6,900 and change. Comes with L3 Harris thin film white phosphorus tubes. In general, L3 Harris is a very well respected company when it comes to night vision and intensifier tubes in particular. The thin film versions of the tubes are not quite as sensitive to light as their pinnacle or their filmless tubes, which are their absolute highest quality that they make, or at least that we know about. But the thin film tubes are quite a bit more reasonably priced, although they're still pretty expensive. And I've also heard that thin film tubes will have a longer service life because the film actually helps protect the intensifier tube. And so filmless tubes may experience a faster degradation. So that's something you spend twelve to $13,000 on NVGs with these pinnacle filmless white phosphor tubes and your tubes are gonna wear out faster. So that's, that's kind of a bummer. So for me, the thin film tubes were pretty cool. Let's talk about diopter, gain, and focus. The ATN PS31 features adjustable diopter, manual focus, and automatic gain control. Adjustable diopter means that the image can be adjusted to correct for variation in human vision the same way that prescription glasses or contacts do. For a unit to be used by civilians, this feature makes sense. Using the diopter, I can more easily let friends try out the NVG and they can adjust it to better match each wearer's eyes. That said, I can see why it makes sense for the PVS-31 to do away with adjustable diopter 
because it would save a few ounces and your Spec Ops Commando can simply have the diopter set for them at the factory. I have mixed feelings about the automatic gain control. I do appreciate the fact that automatic gain control makes it simple to go from a well-lit area to total darkness. I can wear the device and walk into a fully lit home, step out the door into a very dark night, and just keep on moving with no adjustment needed. On nights with strong moonlight, open areas are extremely well lit, which causes the unit to reduce its light sensitivity. So on these types of nights, I may like the option to have a manual gain control because it might allow me to fine tune the device's sensitivity to optimize for scanning shadows and dark thickets. So night vision is always full of trade-offs. The manual focus also comes with trade-offs as well, but I agree with the choice of ATN to send this with manual focus. Being a complex optical device, night vision goggles need to be focused. While wearing the device, if you focus on objects at 10 to 25 yards away, objects that are within arm's reach will appear blurry to you. What this means is that you could see a coyote from the other side of your yard, but if you went to go reach for your door handle to open the door of your truck or something like that, the door handles and all those things like your keys or anything like that would appear extremely blurry and out of focus. So I find a good balance is to focus about 25-30 yards away and just deal with anything up close being blurry. In a perfect world, everything would be in perfect focus all of the time, but in the real world, using an automatic focus is another complex failure point that could easily break it might involve software trying to guess what the most important part of the image is or what I'm actually trying to focus on and look at. All right, let's talk size and weight. The ATN is reasonably lightweight at 21 ounces. By comparison, the much more expensive PVS31 weighs about 17 ounces. The lightweight is very important when you're hanging goggles off the front of a helmet and wearing it for several hours. Of course, the PVS31 achieves its lighter weight by removing features like the adjustable diopter that I do like. Of course, if you opt for the PVS31 over the PS31, your wallet will also be significantly lighter, so pros and cons. The size of this NVG is very similar in form factor to the PVS31 as well. ATN lists the BNVG dimensions as 4.5 inches in length, 7th in width, I believe that is fully extended, and 3.4 inches tall. I haven't confirmed these measurements because I don't care, but they seem about right. Performance and durability. I've had the PVS31 for about 4 months so far, and up to this point, I'm very happy with them. I've used them in a variety of weather and lighting conditions. So with the exception of the knockoff G24 mount that ATN included, I've been very satisfied with the durability of the NVG. I've used these goggles in mainly autumn and winter conditions common to the Pacific Northwest Mountains. I've worn them for several hours in a continuous near-freezing rainstorm as well as snowy blizzard conditions. Despite these adverse conditions, the goggles have continued to work flawlessly. Battery usage has also been very modest which is nice considering that CR123 batteries can be very expensive and somewhat hard to find at times. I purchased the Gen 3 white phosphorus version, so my comments about image quality are reflective of that. I've looked through Gen 2 Photonist Echo tubes, and I got to compare them to my Gen 3, and the Gen 3s are far and away superior in terms of light amplification, image quality, and resolution. That said, the Photonist Echo tube did seem to have enough clarity and resolution to be very useful and definitely a lot more modestly priced. Most of my use has been in very rural environments with little to no man-made lights. In a driving rainstorm under heavy cloud cover with no moon and a thick canopy of trees, the shadows deepen to the point that animals, or hypothetically someone wearing camouflage, could hide from someone wearing these goggles in the shadows of thickets. Despite this, I can still see well enough to walk around and navigate obstacles without using the IR illumination. In these types of stormy conditions, where there's no snow cover and there's no artificial illumination, expect the image quality to appear grainy and dim. On the other side, with even the tiniest amount of moonlight or starlight, 
even if obscured by clouds, expect the image quality to improve exponentially. On a clear night with stars and a crescent moon, the scene is absolutely stunning. Are dual tubes worth it? The answer to this question depends on your budget and what you want to accomplish. For moving around quickly at night, for me, dual tubes are totally worth it. On the other hand, if you're mainly wanting to use your NVG for static observation, surveillance, or you're on a budget, then a single tube system may be the way to go. For me personally, I strongly prefer dual tubes for most applications. All right, let's talk about the downsides. Let's talk about the quote G24 mount included. ATN shipped the device with a helmet mount along with a G24 style mount, but the excessive free play in the G24 mount that came with mine leads me to believe that it's a knockoff and not a real Wilcox. I suppose it's nice that I had one less thing to immediately purchase, but the excessive free play of the mount was very disappointing. Out of the box, the mount included with the unit had so much free play that the NVGs were almost useless for anything but just walking around in my backyard. The knockoff G24 has tension screws that can be tightened down to limit the floppiness, but when you do tighten those screws down, it makes the flip up feature and the eye relief adjustment of the mount non-functional. The PAG style helmet base plate seems well made, but I didn't use it much. After tightening down the tension screws on the knockoff G24, it does a passable job of stabilizing the goggles so long as you don't want to use the mount to flip them up. As an alternative, Would I've been flipping you? the tubes up in a goal wing fashion when I need them out of the way for an admin task or something like that. Overall, it might make sense to use the included mount to get started, but if you're already spending real money, you're eventually going to want a real Wilcox. Final thoughts. I'm very happy with the performance per dollar of the PS31. So far, so good. This unit is an affordable way to get into the dual tube game, and I appreciate the options of the various tubes at different price points. I'm really happy with the performance and low light conditions of my Gen 3. Having night vision is a game changer, and I'm really just excited to own the night, or at least own a little piece of the night, or rent the night, or, or whatever the cool kids are saying. I do believe that the ATN PS31 just might be the best night vision goggles for the money. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that.